Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us. My name is Steve Winter, and we're about to launch a great new era of football here in Washington. We appreciate you coming out for the news conference. To start off, I'd like to introduce the president and COO of the new XFL. Please welcome Jeffrey Pollack. Jeffrey. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it, is, uh, it is an honor to be here. Mayor Bowser, thank you uh, for, for being here today. And, um, and thank you to all of Washington uh, for opening up your arms to uh, this new league and this great new team, the D.C. Defenders, uh, led by Eric Moses. Um, on behalf of the entire XFL organization and our owner, Vince McMahon, um, our, our appreciation is sincere. And we are proud to make history together with all of Washington tomorrow when we launch a brand new, fresh, fan first sports league. And we could think of no better city than Washington to play the very first game of this new league. And that's for a few reasons. One, Washington is an incredible sports town. You have a wonderful championship culture that I hope we're going to become uh, part of. Um, but there's also a great sense of community in Washington. And, and we at the Defenders and the XFL uh, connecting to the community, connecting authentically to the community, giving back to the community is absolutely important to us and a key part of how we're launching this league. But at a higher level, I think there is a almost spiritual uh, connectivity between Washington today and the XFL. Uh, we are a league of opportunity, and I think this is a city now of opportunity. We believe that we are creating opportunity for more football fans to consume their favorite sport, football. We are about giving more opportunity to more players to play the game they love, to more coaches to coach the game they love, and, and we're proud of that. But we're also, like Washington today, a league of innovation. And everything that we're doing is about bringing a fresh spirit, a new set of eyes, and, and a slightly different beat to how we bring to fans not just teams, but a league and an entire sports experience. And finally, I think that Washington is a city that, like us, loves football. Everything about the XFL, everything that we do is for the love of football. And we're so proud to be in this incredible facility Audi Field to be in this awesome city to make history with this city together and it is all in the name of doing something for the love of football. Thank you. Thank you. And now I'd like to introduce the president of the DC Defenders, Eric Moses. Eric. Well, good morning everyone. Thank you all for being here. Jeffrey, thank you for the remarks and for coming down. Uh, it's a great day in, in the District of Columbia. We are excited to, uh, to launch our team here tomorrow uh, in this beautiful uh, field. I think it no coincidence that uh, uh, our teams, our sports teams, have had lots of, uh, lots of luck and lots of championships since this mayor has been in office. Uh, we are now officially the District of Champions, uh, uh, and uh, we're hoping to add to that as quickly as we can. Uh, the mayor has long said that she wants Washington, D.C. to be the sports capital of our country, and, uh, and we want to make certain that we're adding to that. So, so happy and pleased that, that Mayor Bowser would join us today, that she would welcome us as a new entity uh, into the sports scene here in Washington, D.C. And for that, we would like to present her with her own D.C. Defenders jersey oh, with yeah. the number 51. Oh, all right. That's right. Thank you. Absolutely, absolutely. We, we hope you will, uh, you will don that and many other Defenders uh, colors when you come out and join us here at Audi Field. Um, Thank you. With, with no further ado, the mayor of our great city, uh, Muriel Bowser. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, I am delighted to, to be here and to celebrate uh, the D.C. Defenders and their arrival to Washington, D.C. And hopefully uh, that also means the arrival of championship 
football to Washington, D.C., and we are uh, extremely excited about that. Uh, we're at beautiful Audi Field, uh, and we are, in fact, um, celebrating what D.C. residents and taxpayers have invested in uh, to make sure that sports are indeed a fabric of uh, life in Washington. We're proud to be a world-class city, and we know in world-class cities uh, there's art there's culture, there's entertainment, and there's sports champions. Uh, we uh, were delighted to hear that Eric Moses had joined the team. Uh, Eric, of course, has been a longtime leader in uh, attracting sport and cultivating a, a professional sports in Washington with Events DC, uh, and we know that he will do the same with the DC Defenders. So let's give Eric a big round of applause. And uh, I also uh, think I have the privilege because tomorrow is game one, right? The, tomorrow is the first game um, and the first game in the league, um, which I didn't know, but I'm happy to hear that too. Uh, and so the eyes of um, this, uh, not only the eyes of this franchise in Washington, but for the entire league, and we're happy about that. Uh, let me tell you uh, that I will proclaim this week D.C. Defenders Week and I'll say a little bit about that. Whereas professional football returns to Washington, D.C. on Sunday, February the 8th, when the XFLs, I guess that should be Saturday, XFLs, D.C. Defenders, one of the eight franchises, becomes the newest team to compete in the sports capital. Whereas we acknowledge team president Eric Moses, head coach Pep Hamilton, and XFL League and WWE owner Vic, Vince McMahon, and wish them and their team much success in the first season. And whereas the XFL aims to provide a familiar football experience for fans over the course of a 10-week season through more entertainment value and innovative interpretation of traditional rules. So I like that. Uh, and whereas the D.C. Defenders home turf will be the Audi Field in southwest Washington, D.C., and viewers can watch and support their team in person and from home on cable, satellite, streaming, and network television. Therefore, I proclaim February 3rd through the 9th as D.C. Defenders Week in the District of Champions. Congratulations. <laughs> I guess you probably have to answer questions. Yeah, I think there may be some more questions for you. Those questions, questions. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm I was actually just going to say we'll have a photo op in just a few minutes, but at the moment I'd like to open up the floor for questions to any of our honored guests. Anybody? Well, I've got questions. Uh, can somebody help the unfamiliar fans understand kind of – if they come to the game tomorrow, what would be different from a college or NFL game as opposed to an XFL game? Thanks, Mark. So we have some rule innovations. Um, one of the things that, that uh, we say about the XFL is if you, if you love football, you're going to love the XFL. It'll be familiar football on a 100-yard field, moving the ball down the field, four downs at a time that people are accustomed to. Uh, but we have some rule innovations that we think make the game faster, uh, up-tempo, uh, and safer for our players, and more interesting for our coaches to coach as well. So our catch rule is similar to the college catch rule. It's one foot inbounds, easier to officiate, uh, easier for for uh, the receivers to protect themselves. Our kickoff is going to be really interesting. Uh, we put our, our kicking line and the coverage line uh, five yards apart rather than ten yards apart. Uh, those those uh, two groups are not able to engage until the ball is caught. Uh, again, making the game safer instead of uh, having guys run down the field at uh, high speeds and having high velocity impacts. Um, we've got uh, a very interesting overtime uh, setup, which is much more like a shootout in soccer or, or hockey uh, that you'll see so that the, the outcome of the game is decided on the field and not by a coin toss. Uh, and uh, our, after, our point after touchdown is very interesting and we think it's going to be both uh, uh, good for coaches in terms of strategy but also for fans in the sense that you can get one, two,
two or three points after a touchdown, depending on whether you take the ball out uh, from the two, five, or the ten yard line. And so if you can imagine being down 18 points uh, in the fourth quarter, that's two possessions and two successful scores and with three-point conversions after, after a touchdown. So those are some of the, the, the most obvious rule differences you'll see. But otherwise, if you're sitting here or if you're watching on television, it will look like the football you know and love and have grown up watching. And what's a ticket cost for a game in the XFL? Yeah, so our, our season tickets start at twenty dollars uh, and go up to a hundred dollars. So you could bring a, a family of four to a to a game uh, for less than a hundred dollars. And what are ticket sales looking like for tomorrow? Great, robust. Uh, we are getting the reception in, in Washington that we expected uh, after many months of trying to introduce our team and our league to this region uh, and to this city, and, and we've been really pleased with the response thus far. And are there local players? Are there, I know the coach has a, a local connection from Howard. Are there players people will recognize? Yeah, there'll be some players that, that folks recognize. I think we've got uh, a tight end from Bowie State. Uh, we've got some other players on the roster who are, who are local players. Um, and you also have players like our, our star quarterback, Cardell Jones, who, as many of you will recall, won the, the first college football playoff national championship in 2015 with, uh, he makes me say, the Ohio State University. Uh, and so, uh, and Donnell Pumphrey, who's on our team, who is the all-time leading rusher in the NCAA uh, history. So there'll be some familiar names on both sides of the ball. And for tomorrow's contest, many of you will recognize the name of, uh, of the head coach of, uh, of our opponent, the Seattle Dragons, Jim Zorn, uh, who was once here as a coach for the NFL team here. So there will be lots of familiarity uh, on, on the field tomorrow. So if you're very successful, I mean, you're going to want to play in a stadium bigger than 20,000. Mayor, what's the possibility you're going to get a new stadium here? It's <laughs> very good. Can you step up and tell us that? Yes, I don't have anything else to add. You, very good. Have you been in negotiations? I don't have anything else to add. <laughs> well, now you're teasing us. Mayor Bowser, could we ask, just ask you, if, you know, it, it, I don't want to read anything into your remarks, but, it, you, know, well, you know, hopefully a championship team back to D.C. sounded like maybe a little dig at the NFL franchise here. What, what, what do you say about football back in D.C.? Well, we people love football in Washington, D.C. I think we know that. Uh, it's no secret that most Washingtonians want their team um, back. Uh, and I think, and I don't know a lot about the XFL, and I'm very uh, curious about uh, the, the, the rule innovations, and it sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. I love that there is a safety focus, uh, and I love that fam it's family-friendly, that families can come um, that right in town. Uh, they have great transportation options to get here, a beautiful field, um, a nice amenities uh, in the stadium. So I think it's an outstanding addition. Um, and I, I don't know that I was making a dig other than to say it's great to have football in Washington. Along those lines, where do we stand as far as the stadium negotiations with the NFL team, bringing them, bringing them back to D.C.? Honestly, I, I have nothing to, to add um, in terms of uh, conversations with the team. And, and as I have said many, many times before, our focus is on making sure that Washington, D.C., decides what happens uh, to RFK. Uh, we have a number of proposals out uh, to transform that very large campus uh, with a focus on what we really need in the city, and that's housing. Uh, one question either for Eric or, or Jeffrey. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one question for either uh, Eric or Jeffrey. One of the biggest complaints about most pro sports is that games last too long. And I know that one of the rules in the XFL call for a shorter play clock and other rules that will speed up the game. Could one of you perhaps address that? You just said it. Our game is going to be fast paced, up tempo, and should, and you, you just answered your own question, but our game will be fast paced, up tempo, and Sam, correct me if I'm wrong, done in under three hours. That's the XFL. It's, it's going to be fresh. It's going to be fast. Out there at that time between plays, it'll be 25. 25. 25. 25 seconds. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you. And now, folks, we'll.